said, what is? He said, well, the whole first chapter, wow. and that's you. And I thought, okay, well, this <laughs> might be a little different. Um, and so th that happened. Mm -hmm. And then right after The New Yorker came out, um, Carlton Clay from the State University here in Oneana, who was one of the professors of music there, mm -hmm. and called me and said, you know, I would like to have you come teach a course or to talk about your experience in, in music composition. And, and I said, sure, I, I, I'd do that. Mm -hmm. And then Oliver's book came out in October of, of 07. And, and I remember going to the opening of it, which was really, I had been invited to go, which was really an honor. Mm -hmm. and, and right after that, Carlton called me up and said, I'd like to change things a little bit, and, and I want to change the venue. And he asked me if I would give a concert instead of teaching a class. And I thought, well, that's, that's going some. I, I've never done anything like that, mm -hmm. and, and I don't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, it'll be okay, whatever you, you know, I'm sure you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I agreed to do it, and the day that, that he had available was January of 2008, January 29th. Mm -hmm. So January 29th, as it turns out, was my birthday. And I thought, okay, this is too weird. You know, I'm <laughs> going to have a rebirth in, in the, into the music world, uh, and, and this whole thing is happening. And... As I started in the process of preparing for this, he would call me and say, well, you know, there's been a slight change. And he said, you know, the BBC found out about it and they're going to be here. And then two days later he called again, well, Granada Media found out about it and they're going to be here. And then, and then German television found out about it. I was like, how in the world are these people finding out? <laughs> I said, I don't know anybody there. Yeah. And, and he says, well, I told them they could come. I said, did you really? And he says, yeah, it'll be fine. Mm. I love that line. He always <laughs> says that to me. It'll be fine. Um, and, and at that point, I hadn't memorized the music. Mm. I mean, this now this is three pieces of music. Mm. Um, you know, the one, the Lightning Sonata is, you know, is in three movements. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a 20-minute piece of piano music. Mm -hmm. um, there were two smaller pieces, but, you know, there's still essentially 40 minutes worth of music um, mm -hmm. that I had written, but really had not, it hadn't been polished, hadn't been memorized, and... And so I had to start that whole process. My piano teacher, Sandy McCain, you know, we came up with a strategy and she said, I'll give you until the end of December to have it memorized. Mm -hmm. And so she started working with me two hours a day in the beginning of December. And I was working on memorizing all of that and then I ran into a problem. I had what's called a ganglion cyst. It's a, a fluid-filled sac that forms in usually in places like your wrist. Mm -hmm. And I had the unfortunate pleasure of having one form in my spine. Oh. Um, so suddenly in the middle of December, I was having horrible leg pain. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sit. I couldn't work. I, you know, I was... I was okay on Sunday, but Monday I was, I was absolutely on the sidelines. And I, I called my my friend who was a neurosurgeon, and I said, "I'm in big trouble here." Yeah. And I said, "Can you help me out?" Mm -hmm. And he, so he said, "He said, come on over." And I, that was on a Wednesday. I and he had I Tuesday night I had an MRI. Wednesday I was in his office, and Friday I was in surgery. Wow. So, so this is this is now the third week of December. Uh, 
I've got a concert in six weeks and and I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And as it turns out, having to have surgery gave me the time to do all those things. Had that not happened, I never would have been able to have time to memorize the music or to practice to the you know the five or six hours a day that I needed to practice. Mm. Um, and so, you know, the day you know two days after surgery, I was I was back at the piano. And, you know, and I did, of course, I didn't tell anyone I did that, but, mm. and he wouldn't have been real happy with me. But, he knows now. yeah. And so I, you know, I just, I just started, and, and because of that, I had the time to memorize all the music and, and to prepare for it. And so it, it worked out to my benefit. Um, and Sandy worked with me just an unbelievable amount of hours mm. um, to prepare for it. And on January 29th, it was just, they sold out. Mm. Um, actually, they, they told me that they had 2,000 requests for tickets. Wow. And so they, they wound up having two concerts um, on the 29th and on the 3rd of February. Congratulations. And, Congratulations. you know, and so I had three television crews and, and uh, two sellout crowds. And, and it was a wonderful experience because I was, be, you know, the way I would do it is I would, I would talk to the audience just to say who I am, mm -hmm. how, to, how I got here. Mm -hmm. I would talk about the individual pieces of music mm -hmm. and what they each meant. Mm -hmm. And then I would play them, and then I I told the whole story about the lightning and and you know my adventure into um, a realm that nobody understands, and and then I I opened it up for questions, and and it was incredible because people are genuinely interested and want to know what else there is because. I mean, most of us have come to a point in our lives where we realize, you know what? If this is all there is, it's not worth being here. Mm -hmm. And and that was the thing that kept coming up over and over again. And afterwards, people would come up, and very sheepishly, they'd kind of lean over and they'd say, this happened to me, right. but I can't tell anybody. And And it's surprising... There's a, there was a, every time I've done a show mm -hmm. like this, I've had three or four people come up to me afterwards and write their name on a little piece of paper or the email address. They want to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they've had an, a, a near-death experience or an out-of-body experience, and they don't feel like they can talk about it because everybody looks at them like they're a little wacky. Right. And and the truth be known, I didn't tell anybody about it for the same reason. Right. And and especially in my business, I mean, mm. you know, it's like I can just see the state coming and say, you know, we're taking your license, buddy, because you're a little loose around the edges. <laughs> and had had Oliver Sacks not told the story, mm -hmm. I think the outcome would have been different. Mm. But this is somebody who is the, the consummate scientist and clinical investigator mm -hmm. who also has a great gift to write mm -hmm. and is well respected. Mm -hmm. And for him to come out and tell this story mm -hmm. is, is changes, changes it entirely because it's credible. That's right. Um, and, and even though... I was a scientist, and and I've been in medicine all of my life. It still would have been hard for me to come out and say these things mm -hmm. um, without the endorsement of somebody like that. Absolutely.